Hi everybody, welcome back to Liam's Hobby Room, the Gunpla channel with the most unimaginative name on YouTube. Today we're going to be doing some uh, painting. We're going to be painting today and I'm wearing a toque because yowza! It is cold outside and I want to stay warm. So this video is for those of you who are interested in getting into painting and if you follow my videos on the channel, you know that I like to paint with an airbrush and that's what you're going to be seeing today. After that, I will be doing some hand painting and I'm going to put on some decals. I'm going to put some decals on. Uh, and I'll do some weathering too, but not in this video. We'll save that for next time because it's a whole, it's a whole thing, it's a whole task. Uh, now, before I start, I just want to remind you all that uh, basic airbrushing technique applies universally to everything. It doesn't matter what you're painting, any model kit. The basic technique is the same, basically. So let's take a look at the kit we'll be painting today. This is an amphibious mobile suit from the Principality of Zeon, and it's got a crazy Zeon name to back that up. It's called the Juwagu. The Juwagu! <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> I love that name. Uh, now, I'm not going to be reviewing the kit here. Uh, this is, we're just talking painting today. Just painting things. Hashtag just painting things. So let's get to it. Now my first step is to close any seam lines that need to be closed, sand the kit down, and clean up any rough areas that may have resulted from uh, my building it poorly <laughs> or surfacing it. Then I disassemble the kit, take it all apart, and separate each piece into color-coded piles. Uh, if the plastic is really messy, sometimes I'll wash it with soap and water, but the juwagu ain't looking too bad. In this phase, I'm able to get a sense of what colors will go where, uh, what I'll need to mask off, and what I'll be hand painting later. So let's first talk about some of the tools I'll be using for this. Uh, these are painting clips by uh, Mr. Hobby. Um, these things are great. They come in a variety of different sizes. I have them in the small size, and they're pretty, they're pretty beat up here, and the medium size. So this is what the small size one looks like in a pack. We sell these at BC Shaver and Hobbies. They're fantastic. I use them all the time. I use a combination of these and uh, shish kebab sticks with just a little bit of sticky tack on the end that I just got from, uh, you know, the dollar store or whatever years ago. You can stick them into this cat scratcher looking thing that Mr. Hobby also makes. We sell these at BC Shaver and Hobbies as well. You can also just mix up some corrugated cardboard like this uh, and tape it together. I've actually taped two of these together. You, you can get a cat scratcher, though sometimes those are more expensive depending on where you're going and what kind of cat scratcher you're looking for. There are some fancy cats out there, I tell you. Uh, so this is just something you might want to pick up or something like it. Who am I to tell you what to do, huh? And then. It's prime time. I'll be priming in black, which is usually what I prime with. Uh, I like to build my colors up from black in really thin coats, which allows me to blend them like just a little bit. Uh, this, the suit's original color scheme calls for white and black, but I really don't like to use those colors and just call it a day. Sometimes I use them that way, but usually I only use black and white to shade or lighten a color when mixing. So my whites tend to be mostly blues and grays using pure white only as a highlight. Likewise with uh, my blacks, I tend to work up from black instead of finishing with black. I just think it looks too dead and boring to do that. I challenge you all to add just a tiny bit of white and blue to your black mixture, especially if you highlight, it'll look a lot more three-dimensional. I do a lot of color mixing. I like to be able to make my own colors. It's one of the biggest reasons I got into airbrushing in the first place. So that's what I'm doing for pretty much all my colors here. They're all composites of different ones. Either way, I'm using really thin coats of paint, layering them one on top of another, and uh, just you know gently circling as I airbrush to kind of work that bloom out from the center where the color's the most saturated. With thin coats, your finished product will look a lot better than if you just blasted it with a single thick coat. Now, with that out of the way, I'm going to use some Vallejo model color for painting some of the details I missed. Uh, yes, you can mask them off, but if they are small enough, I'd rather just hand paint them. I hate masking. I hate masking. It's super tedious. And I know it looks better. I know. I know. Sometimes masking is necessary, and sometimes it will get you a much better finish, but not today, baby. So here is the Juwagu after painting. The Juwagu. Ah, such a fun word. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I've scratched it in a few places, but I think I can hide that with some weathering later. So after I finish the main paintwork of my kit, I kind of partially assemble it, so I'll put the arms together, I'll put the legs together, and the torso, and the head, uh, and then I do a bit of panel lining, and then I get it all set aside and ready for some top coating. It'll be a gloss coat, a gloss coat first. This helps the decals look more natural when I apply them. Thankfully, I've been collecting water transfer decals for about like seven years, so I've got a pretty good selection to choose from. Bandai prints their Gundam decals pretty infrequently, so snag them while you can. Uh, I have a lot of third-party and custom ones too to round out my collection, but today we're going to stick to the Bandai stuff. 
And after all my deckling, it's time for two more top coats. A gloss one, again, to really, really uh, hone in that those deckles, because deckles are inherently glossy, and if you just matte coat over the deckles, they're not gonna blend properly. Or they might, but it's very, very rare that that'll happen. So we're gonna put a gloss coat down first, and then we're gonna put a matte coat down. Here's a shot of the juice oh, wow. before. And here is the finished result. I didn't do anything crazy, but it still serves as an example of what you can accomplish with paint. Just a little bit. Just a little bit here and there. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope this video helped show my process well and maybe answered some lingering questions about airbrushing. Check out some of my other videos below for some tutorials on airbrushing and getting a kit ready for painting. Um, also, don't forget to visit bchobbies.com for all your hobby needs. We got lots. We got all kinds of stuff. We got paints. We got tools and supplies that you can dig into. And stay warm, everybody, and I'll see you next time on Liam's Hobby Room.